According to a recent study released by the Northern Caribbean University, a high percentage of Jamaican mothers, especially single mothers with limited resources, are finding it quite difficult to balance life with parenting. Joining us this morning is our good friend from the Phoenix Counseling Center, counseling psychologist, Dr. Patrice Charles King. Hey, Patrice, morning. How hey, are you? Dr. Patrice, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well. Give thanks. Um, it's, this is interesting, and I was reading it this morning, and I kind of kept going, huh? I didn't know this. And the, the first question I'll ask, they says, according to the research, as Delia says, 26% of Jamaican women who have children go through post-traumatic stress disorder. My first question mm -hmm. is, what is that? What is post-traumatic stress disorder? PTSD is, it's almost like you're experiencing um, a, a trauma and um, but this trauma can arise from childbirth uh, emergency c-section stillbirth um, just hormonal imbalance so it's and hormonal imbalance is one of the most common reasons for um, for PTSD it's very prevalent among J Jamaican women as you can see at 26% yeah, yeah. Um, Difference between that and postpartum depression. Okay, so postpartum depression, it, so there's like a thin line between both of them. Yeah. So the, the trauma of, of childbirth, but then after childbirth, when again you have the hormonal imbalance, or you may be experiencing um, something within the family, being single, being married, not getting support, not um, being, feeling guilty about parenting, not being a good parent, or wondering if you are a good parent. And so that postpartum depression coupled with the hormonal imbalance can create this feeling of helplessness and worthlessness for some women. Some women... Um, feel as if, well, some of the women that come to me at, my, at the counseling center, they say that they feel as if they're unable to connect to their child um, because of the expectations of what they believe they should be doing as a mother. Um, some, some women who can't breastfeed um, or some women who are just completely frustrated and unsupported and you have a crying child and you're trying to deal with managing yourself in that moment and it can it can create that postpartum depressed feeling or experience for some women. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Patrice, while I understand everything you just said and things happen, so not everything is planned in life, whether fortunately or unfortunately, mm -hmm. but you would want to think that for the most part, you want to be a mom for the most part. You, you, I mean, people look happy sometimes when they're pregnant. So why, why when it gets to that point that you're a mother, you have this child and you're so happy, why do you kind of just go, Zerp? why? You know, so, so again, hormonal imbalance plays a big part in postpartum depression. Um, there's a lot of changes in your hormones. But when you think about it, everybody has their own personal pregnancy journey. Yeah. And that pregnancy journey it does not, you know, end when you give birth. So you have that pregnancy journey, you have that birthing journey and experience, and then you have that parenting. And it, there is a somewhat of a difference, and there are some pros and cons between being single mom and married mom. And so when you take a look at those pros and cons, the experiences, of course, of every woman is unique, but there are going to be some challenges based on whether you are single or whether you are married with you know, as a, as a mom. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad you raised that because it, it goes back to what you are saying because hormones are hormones. They don't care if you're single or you're married. Exactly. <laughs> if hormones exactly. are going to be a problem, they're going to be a problem. And so I find exactly. that sometimes a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's because you're single why you're struggling. But married women have these issues as well. Um, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Do. Especially if you're having a conflict with your partner or if you feel as if you are less independent um, when you have that child. Or sometimes even the expectations and the shared responsibility or lack of shared responsibility. So I have a lot of women that come to me that are married mothers who may have um, believed that they would have gotten more support from their partner when it comes to parenting responsibilities. Um, and they're not getting it. 
And so their experience is very different from what they expected it to be. That disappointment and frustration can also create a depression. Yeah. Um, in one article, the mother confessed that she's not on good terms with the child's father. And so she mm -hmm. takes out that kind of anger and rage onto the child. She projects it no. to the child. How often do you see instances like that in, in your experience? Absolutely not uncommon. Unfortunately, it is not uncommon for parents who are experiencing conflict within their relationships to inadvertently, inadvertently take it out on their children. Mm -hmm. And you know, this manifests itself in various ways. They can be overcritical, they can neglect the child's needs, or even being physically or emotionally abusive. Um, unfortunately, the statement is it's not uncommon. And a lot of the times, even with, with moms, sometimes when they're not getting along with their, their the, or they're not in a relationship with the with the father and they sometimes and oftentimes use the child as a manipulative tool wow. to to um at the other parent. Mm -hmm. yep. no, so this Go ahead. Yeah, I was also reading again in preparing for this that more than half the respondents of, of what NCU did, 50.5% said they had difficulty providing for their families. Um, this one I, f I found almost scary. It says 26.2% said they have been diagnosed with a mental illness since becoming a mother. Depression was the most common among them, followed by bipolar disorder, anxiety, etc. Does that surprise you or no? And, you know, again, it does not surprise me because um, being the responsibility of a parent is probably one of the most difficult jobs that anyone will ever experience. And again, your parenting experience is unique to you. Um, a lot of single moms, they do go through their financial strains and lack of support. And even the stigmatization of being a single mother, you know, facing judgment from other persons when or how other persons view single parenthood. And, and so it can create that depression. Um, bipolar disorder, not sure if it existed prior to the pregnancy, um, as more of a chemical imbalance, but I know that the de that depression can be very real. And when you feel as if you don't have that unit, you don't have that support and you're in it all alone, it can, it can create a high level of anxiety and stress that will affect you physically, emotionally, cognitively, which is how you think and how you, and how you act, your behavior. Yep. How important it would be then, having said all that we have said, that these to-be moms see you or somebody like you before they become a, a, a mother? How important would that be? Um, if you think that, well, and again, based on your circumstances, it's always important to plan. So best case scenario, you plan to be pregnant. Um, again, the most important and probably the most difficult job in the world, and you don't go to school for it. So just like anything else, organizing and planning for your pregnancy will make it easier for you. Seeking support, is also going to be important. You know, reading up on what to expect and what not to expect. But most importantly, taking care of yourself and being kind to yourself and just developing a, a support network would also assist mothers going into this pregnancy, you know, and this birthing plan. Yeah, it's something the Minister of Health underscored in his sectoral debate. Um, he says, some of the community interventions aimed at addressing mental health issues include making mothers a priority because I think yes. he realizes that it's a problem. And he says support must be given to the mothers from before they become physical mothers and is grounded mm -hmm. in the public health and primary health care infrastructure. What do you say to mothers this morning? Because that's a very important thing, you know. I think a lot of mothers, um, after the child is born, it kicks in that, okay, I'm, a, I'm responsible or I'm a mother. Um, but if they get the, 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 the prenatal and the postnatal care, I feel like th it'd be a little bit easier. Am I wrong? It would be, it would be easier. Yeah. See, it's always important you don't know when you believe that something just does not feel right. Mm -hmm. Always important to press um, having per symptoms of anxiety yeah. or depression. 
or if you feel like you're just not able to cope with the stress or the stressors that are around you. Very important to seek help from a mental health profession. Yep. And for those individuals that know of someone that is a mother or a mother to be who's struggling with even the thought of parenting, also very important to offer empathy and support and just resources. A lot of the times, um, this can just be as simple as offering to help with household tasks or providing emotional support yeah. or just a list there, you know, um, childcare, helping with childcare, just not just asking, are you okay? Do you need any help? is also going to be very important to supporting that mother that's there on her own, or even if she's in a family with a husband. Just asking. Always great to see you. God bless you and your family. Stay safe. Likewise. Take Amen. care. Phoenix Counseling Center counseling psychologist, Dr. Patrice Charles King. To administer your health, we'll do it again next Thursday. Folks, coming up, Red Rose for Gregory. Stick around for that. Copeland is here and Dale will have a chat with him.